What's going on guys? Welcome to the Saturday show. Now, of course, on Saturdays, I like to go back through the week of Newswave, see what you guys had to say down in the comments, to, according to all the different topics and things we talk about throughout the week. It's pretty fun to see what you guys think about the different, uh, different things going on in games. And of course, it's fun to respond to them as well. As always, guys, if you enjoy these videos, make sure you do hit the like button. It does help out. We're going to start with a quick piece of news, and that is a game that I'm still shocked is coming to the Switch because, well, it barely runs on the Xbox One and PS4, better on the Xbox One X, but even on the PC it struggles. You actually need a decent rig to play this at okay frame rates, and that's Ark Survival Evolved. It is coming to the Switch, as we heard a while ago at CES, where they unveiled it to uh, surprise of everyone. Well, it's actually showing up November 30th. Now, when the porting company actually talked about it, they didn't seem to... Think it was going to be that hard for it to run, they seem more concerned with the space constraints of a 16 gigabyte cartridge. Although, I'm curious as to what frame rate they're actually targeting, because if they're targeting 20 frames per second, well, how playable is that? That's why I'm going to tell you guys, maybe wait for gameplay footage, some reviews. I'll do my best to get a review copy of it and talk about it here, because, well, I'm already critical of games as it is, so, uh, you know, I'll... I'll tell you what's actually going on with that game and let you know if it's something you should uh, buy into. But this is going to be very impressive to see it run on the Switch either way. I think if they can get it at 720p at 25 frames per second docked, I will actually be impressed because that, that's definitely a Switch punching well above its weight class. But we'll see November 30th, so we don't have to wait too much longer. That's a Friday, by the way, so uh, payday for a lot of people. But... November 30th is a Friday, and we'll see uh, Ark Survival Evolved launch on the Switch. And starting with the week of Newswave, Monday we talked about a few games that are falling to 2019, which include both Wargroove and Shakedown Hawaii. A new system from Intellivision was also announced called the Amico, which will target the more mainstream casual market. No one says, Intellivision is more promising than Atari at this point, ironically enough. So there's a couple reasons for that. To be honest, I look at the Amico and say, wow, I know a lot more about that than I know about the Atari VCS that I've already bought. Uh, and it's supposed to be getting to me in July. We'll see about that one. But the Amico is very, they're very transparent about everything with this, this system. And uh, we've actually seen them uh, even do long form interviews with different YouTube channels. Rerez 2, uh, Shane over there actually had an entire interview with, with Tommy Tallarico over this whole thing. Like he talked to him about it and there was no issues really or anything. I still don't know how much I believe in what their vision is and who they're targeting, but I at least know who they're targeting and what their plan is. And that's probably the most important thing. Whereas like you're saying, the Atari VCS is still like, what is this exactly, right? They raise a ton of money without us really even knowing completely what this thing is. I mean, we kind of do and kind of kind of don't. And that's coming out soon, whereas the Amico, we know a whole laundry list of information. That's coming out in 2020. So yeah, you're right. It, it's a bit concerning so far. Tuesday, we took a look at sales figures for Starlink that placed the game at number 14 in the all formats chart with 82% of sales coming from the Switch. This was further shown in individual formats where Starlink was completely absent from the other system's charts. It looks like without the Switch version, Starlink would have really been in trouble. Drew says, only reason to play is for Fox McCloud. Imagine if these developers actually create a full-blown Star Fox game barrel roll. So here's the thing about Starlink. It was a multi-plat game. And a lot of the times when multi-plat games are developed for the Switch, PS4, Xbox One, even PC, they do build it with the other systems in mind and then work backwards to kind of fit it onto the Switch, and we see that a lot. I mean, we had to download stuff for the Switch version of Starlink, right? They didn't really have file size in mind completely while they were creating it, whereas a game, Mario Odyssey, is very small in file size. Mario Tennis, there are a lot of games that are just very small when they're specifically designed for the Switch, and they fit on the cartridge correctly, whereas games that are much larger, well, they work backwards, fit them on the Switch as best they can, and then make you download the rest of the stuff. I mean, look at like NBA 2K, you have to download a lot of that game, at least Doom, like I was saying, they figured out how to get the single player specifically on the cartridge, and the multiplayer being downloaded makes sense. But like Wolfenstein 2, yeah, you got downloaded a lot because they were bringing it over from another system. That's kind of the way I looked at Starlink. Even if you look at kind of the visual style on like a full monitor or big blown up TV, you can see that they mostly took that version, turned the resolution down to make it work on the Switch. And the reason I bring that up is because it's going to clearly sell best on the Switch. And I would like to see this team come back 
and specifically work on just a Star Fox game without the other systems in mind, because it's clear people do still want Star Fox, right? I think that's pretty obvious at this point with how skewed it is towards the Switch for Starlink. And I think if they sat down and said, okay, we're developing this for the Switch and that's it, straight up, let's sit down and do this, I feel like we could see something like a Mario Rabbit show up where the Switch audience supports it, it's a good game overall, and it's developed specifically with the Switch in mind. I mean, the Snowdrop engine was used, but it was, of course, stretched between all these different systems, and they pretty much developed specifically for the Xbox One and the PS4 when it came to visuals and space and everything, but then they cut the game up to make more sense with Star Fox, uh, the Star Fox crew. So it's a weird situation, but this, I do think this team has some talent to develop a space shooter like a Star Fox game. I would just like to see Nintendo give them the green light, maybe even fund some of the project alongside uh, Ubisoft, because I think there's a lot of potential there, but they have to create it as a Star Fox game first, and they have to create it specifically for the Switch, which obviously at that point, they would. I mean, I actually wonder if they'll get, like, I guess they'll maybe break even on the Xbox One and the PS4 versions, but keep in mind, they had to develop and engineer, uh, you know, the clips and setups and everything for the Toys to Life on the controllers for the Xbox and the PS4, and I don't think those are selling very well after we saw what happened in the UK, and we'll, maybe we'll get a split in the MPDs, we'll see, but it, it's definitely looking like the other versions will probably lose Ubisoft money, and the Switch version will attempt to make up for some of those lost sales on the physical copies. Digital, we don't know really about that. We'll see how that goes, but uh, yeah, it sounds like the Switch version was holding up the entire operation when it came to the sales. Wednesday saw Sega talking more about Dreamcast games coming to the Switch. It seems during an interview with Famitsu, Sega talked further about getting Dreamcast games on the system one way or the other, even if they need to take the game and rebuild it from its source code. Blue Joy-Con CC says, they gave you PlayStations. We never got stuff like that. Our teachers didn't even like video games, except one, he was pretty cool. We got to play Minecraft. So this was, uh, this was in reply to me talking about how we got PlayStation 1 systems sent home with us to try out kind of educational games. That was kind of when uh, the mainstream, the, 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 the schools and everything started to realize that video games were getting a bit of a, a hold on the market and kids were playing it, you know? I mean, think about it, before then, before that system came out, it was Super Nintendo, it was Genesis, and it was just coming off of the Nintendo, which essentially revived video games in the US. So we weren't that far off from when games came back. So seeing the PS1 and everything show up and uh, that really take off and it kind of mixed multimedia in with CDs, it became more and more mainstream. Keep in mind, the PlayStation original went on to sell over 100 million units. So yeah, it sold really well. They wanted to play around with the idea of trying to see if they could teach us through video games. I don't think it was very successful. I'm gonna tell you why. The one game they sent us home with, so they gave us a PlayStation 1, came with one controller, basically they gave it to us in the box and everything was tagged with a number and everything. And they gave us one game and they would switch it out with the sequel to that game. Yeah, this game came out and it already had sequels. Uh, yeah, here, here's the game. It's, it, it's, it's called Mars Moose Cosmic Quest and then there was Cosmic Quest 2 and I think there was a third one as well. They would send us home with that, they would switch them out and basically it was a learning game, but none of us really played it that much to be honest. We all just rented games. I specifically remember renting Hercules, which that was actually a pretty cool game, by the way, on the PS1. And of course, Mega Man X4, because it's Mega Man. So, you know, I, I did that. But I didn't really rent any big, big RPGs because there wasn't enough time. If you rented it for the weekend, you're not going to beat Final Fantasy VII at that time. Also, I don't think they gave us memory cards. And that was another problem. I remember I had to try to play through Hercules in one shot, same with Mega Man X4. I would just leave it on all weekend, though, because, you know... That's, that's what you did back then without memory cards. Vibe Shaw says, Would be really funny if Sega actually put out their own virtual console on the Switch. It would be a perfect case of Sega does what Nintendo don't. So if I was Sega, I'd be putting everything I can on the Switch when it comes to my legacy library, my older systems, my older games, because you can see a lot of people right now saying, I want virtual console. I, I just want to buy these games straight up. I don't want a subscription service. I want Super Nintendo. You know, I, I, I want N64, GameCube. I want all this stuff. I'll pay a flat rate. I want to buy everything. Again, if I'm Sega, I'm scrambling right now. I'm like, man, we got to get Genesis on here. We got to get Saturn. We got to get Dreamcast. These people want to buy. Nintendo's not giving it to them traditionally for a virtual console. Let's build the virtual console with our library. And we saw it recently. Sonic came out. And I have, to, I have a feeling it did fairly well. Well, better than it should have. I will say that. M2 did a good job with it, but like looking at it, I saw a lot of people talking about it, even playing it online. I'm like, this feels like this game did better than it should have as it just being another Sonic release. Again, emulation was good. It was. 
Uh, they added some cool features to it. There's some extra stuff in there. Some online compatibility, which is neat, but it was still just Sonic. Comes out, I think they're getting like, what, seven or eight bucks per? If I was Sega, and I'm sure they saw some decent sales numbers, I'm already working on Dreamcast stuff. I'm looking to reverse engineer Saturn. There, there's some money there because they can get 20, 15 to $20 for good Dreamcast games. I'm telling you now, they're, they can. You know, if Skies of Arcadia shows up, if Power Stone shows up, you know, if Panzer Dragoon uh, uh, Saga that's on the Saturn that's obscenely expensive shows up, they're getting 15, 20 bucks easy. No one's gonna even ask about it. No one's gonna question it. It's just, they're gonna get paid. It, there's just a big gap right now left open by Nintendo, and I feel like Sega is a company that has the library of games to actually show up and fill in that gap and sell a bunch of games. Thursday, we took a look at a Smash Bros. Switch bundle that leaked online and eventually sold on eBay for over $1,000. The purchase is weird considering you won't be able to use the Smash Bros. code that comes with the system until release day anyway. Awesome Kid says, has anyone considered that maybe Nintendo bought the Super Mario Party and Super Smash Bros. Switch bundle to avoid leaks? So this is really funny because I know people have thought about this, right? Like, oh, maybe Nintendo bought it. And people are like, nah, not really. Yeah, uh, that's probably what the guy thought when Sony bought his hack system that has hacked PS4s. He's, I think he sold two of them to Sony. And they came with hacked games or, or pirated games already on it. And then there was a list that came with it as well that was like, yeah, this is how you get all these other games on here. You can get whatever you want. And this is how you do it. This is how you pirate stuff. And if you remember right, Sony's suing the person. And a lot of it has to do with, well, when they ship it to you, their name, their address, sometimes, depending even their phone numbers on it, if you're going through eBay and you need, to, you need to be able to contact them, it's very possible to contact them through eBay. So, like, all the evidence is there. This person's info is right next to the system that was hacked and modded. Now, here's the thing about this situation, okay? That Super Mario Party, they're not getting in trouble for that. They found it. They were selling it. There's no issue there. Now, this Smash bundle is where things could be interesting because Nintendo might not necessarily be interested in suing that one person for the Smash bundle, but if they find out this person is a part of a company that's distributing these and they just happen to take one home and sell it, then there's a problem because you're, you're breaking agreements that are signed because when we would do our distribution agreements, we would have to sign what is essentially an NDA for when you get these things in because we would get them early. Some games, even a week early, you're not allowed to sell them or you're going to get in trouble. There were fines. I think for like per sale, it was like a $10,000 fine or something. It's a lot. Like it's, it's not a joke. So that could be an issue. That's something where Nintendo could figure it out whether their proximity or maybe they look into it and they're like, oh, you run this or you're a manager here. Well, guess what? That place is in trouble. And guess what? Now you're in trouble because they're going to look look at you and, and uh, well, you were their employee. So huh, we'll see what happens there. But uh, yeah, that's the big issue. Not necessarily selling it, but possibly breaking street date and selling it. Finally, on Friday, we went over the massive reviews Red Dead Redemption 2 has been receiving since embargo lifted on Thursday with the Xbox One version currently sitting at a 98. The PS4 version is currently sitting at a 97. And a new game phone came out in China, which also revealed showing a very similar design to what Nintendo currently has with the Joy-Con controllers on their Switch. Geo says, when it has as much reviews as Mario Odyssey and Zelda Breath of the Wild, then it's historic. Well, currently Red Dead has 29 reviews on the Xbox, 77 on the PS4, so a total of 106. Zelda has 109 on the Switch and, and 13 on the Wii U. Mario Odyssey has 113 reviews. There's a good chance that, uh, well, by next week, Red Dead could have as many or more reviews than Mario Odyssey. And this is kind of where the argument for review codes, or review scores, I should say, review scores don't really make a ton of sense because it's, at the end of the day, it's subjective. I don't even think most reviewers remember that it's a 10-point scale. The, you know, like, I don't even know why one to five even exists, even one to seven at this point, since very few bigger budget games get less than a seven. It is kind of the way it is. Um, occasionally, you'll see a, a place kind of give a low review, and sometimes I feel like it's because it's easy publicity. But for the most part, yes, seven is like average nowadays, right? Not five. Seven, and I guess you could say that it's like a like when you're grading a paper in school, where like 50 is an F or whatever. But at that point, what's the difference between one and 50 it, or one and five? It's still an F then, right? So what's the point? Let's just do the scale five to ten, and that's the scale. Uh, yeah, now it's the thing about Red Dead. It's impressive. Uh, it's going to overshadow pretty much all of Sony's first party games at the Game Awards and the most just awards and everything at Red Dead's gonna it's gonna go over God of War and it's probably gonna go over Spider-Man as well I say probably because Spider-Man's still fairly popular and these come down to like popularity contests sometimes 
But yeah, it's going to overshadow both. I think it's going to win Game of the Year, which is interesting because Sony put out two really good games there with God of War and Spider-Man. But man, Red Dead is something else in the press, isn't it? When Rockstar releases a game, they release a game. Also, at that point, you're pretty much arguing between games that have 97s and I guess a 98 for the Xbox One version of the Red Dead Redemption 2. Uh, so if you're arguing between Odyssey... Uh, Breath of the Wild, two 97s, or we'll even just say the PS4 version of Red Dead, just keep it all 97. I mean, they're all good games, right? And guys, it's going to do it here for the Saturday show. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you do hit the like button. It really helps out if not the dislike. And leave comments down below about everything we talked about, whether it is Ark Survival Evolved. Maybe you're a bit confused and you want to see the performance on that game like I do, because it's going to be very interesting to see when that thing releases. Uh, I think expectations set kind of low for that one. What about the Amico or even Dreamcast games on the Switch? Do you think Sega really has to rush rush this right now and get these games out and then do you think starlink well that company should go on i guess studio within uh, ubisoft and make just a full-on Star Fox game thanks guys for watching i'll see you all later on tonight for the spawncast 9 p.m eastern time